right, welcome everybody. This is Chris with Timeshare Renters. We're at it again with another night walk. We're gonna walk and talk some timeshare stuff. Walking around a beautiful Daytona Beach at night, 2023. Show you guys some resorts here. <clears throat> Most of the resorts that you see here, my clients can get for you. And we can get it at a rate that's gonna beat whatever you see on the market. Again, whatever, whenever I say market, I'm talking about Priceline, Expedia, Hotels.com, Booking.com. We typically beat the market by at least 20%. If you're on Expedia and you see a week for a two bedroom condo style unit for $2,000, 20% is 400. We should have it for at least 1600 or less. We beat the market. That's what we do. If you're interested, and you can always do this, this is a travel hack that you can always do. You can always do this travel hack. If you're interested in traveling to any resort, whether you're going to Daytona Beach, whether you're going to Las Vegas, Nevada, whether you're going to Mexico, whether you're going to the Caribbean, go on the market first. And then come to me and say, hey, Chris, can you beat this? And then what I want you to do when you come to me, you can email me, but I want you to contact me directly. I want you to send a text to my direct line, which is 407-964-5184. Say, hey, Chris, I saw this resort here for this price. Can you beat it? And if I can, what I'll do is I'll let you know the best that I can do. And if I can't, I'll let you know that what you currently see is, is your best option. Ambassador RL Suites. Holiday Inn. Many of my clients have Holiday Inn membership. The Holiday Inn is also an RCI property. So even if they themselves, if their deeded resort is not the Holiday Inn, if they're paired with RCI,
We can do something for you. Again, I want you to go go on the market, be it booking.com, Travelocity, say, hey, I want to stay at the Holiday Inn. I was looking at Expedia, and Expedia has a one-bedroom unit from this date to this date for $1,500. Chris, what can you do? Can you beat it? And I'll let you know if I can beat it. up on the Hard Rock, Daytona Beach. Amazing resort. There's also parking for the Hard Rock right over here across the A1A. As well as for the Hilton that we just passed. I'll show you guys that as well. Now, if you're on the timeshare owner side and you want to get started renting your timeshare, I want you to send me a text as well. 407-964-5184. Or you can simply go to timesharerenters.com. So when you go to timesharerenters.com, it's kind of like a, it's like a four-way stop sign. And the first thing you're gonna see is I'm a timeshare owner and I'd like to get started renting my timeshare. So you would click that and you'd actually, it would prompt you to set a meeting, uh, set an appointment for a phone call with me. Right to the right of that, you say, it says, I'm not a timeshare owner, but I like to get the best rates for luxury resorts. And underneath that, you have an option for people that want to give away their timeshare, as well as an option for the people who would like to take over a timeshare. Now, what I also want to talk about, I want to talk about a couple ways that you can make money with your timeshare. 
I got a couple methods for you. But I will say that these methods do involve a bit of, a bit of capital. One way is renting. Another way is actually selling the timeshare. Now we at Timeshare Renters don't sell the timeshare. If you wanna give away your timeshare, we have a service for that. But if you wanna sell your timeshare, I can tell you how to do it and, and it'd be successful. If you're a timeshare owner, you're gonna have companies call you and really harass you. And I apologize. I'm not one of those companies. I don't make cold calls for people to be members. The only people that I make cold calls for are for small businesses uh, that do travel. Say, hey, my name's Chris. I see that you're a construction company. I know you guys might do a bit of travel. Are you getting good rates? Are you satisfied with the, with the rates that you get for resorts? Are the places that you guys stay at, are they resorts? Are they, are they condo style units? Meaning when you walk into them, is it as if you're walking into a condo? Or are they hotel style? And when I say a condo style unit, does it have a washer and dryer? Does it have a full kitchen? Is it as if you're walking inside of a unit? So I do make cold calls. This is the Daytona Beach Club. This is a nice one as well. I do make cold calls to small businesses that do travel. But on the on the owner side, as 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 far as timeshare owner side, we don't call you. If you speak to me, you've seen me in the paint, you've seen a video like this, and you've made an appointment to talk to me. But anyway, so if you're a timeshare owner, you're gonna get calls from companies. Say, hey, you can sell your timeshare by listing your timeshare on my website And they, they all do the same thing. They, they, they give you like an evaluation. Then they tell you that your timeshare is worth an extremely high amount of money. You pay them, then you never hear back from them. Well, clearly that's not how you sell your timeshare. So I'm gonna talk about two methods in which you can make money with your timeshare that work. One method is selling your timeshare. The second method is renting your timeshare. If you're gonna sell your timeshare, you wanna sell it the way that it was sold to you. Nine times out of 10, when you bought your timeshare, you went to a timeshare presentation. So just listing your timeshare on a website is not gonna get the job done. You gotta actually do a presentation. I actually have a couple clients of mine and this is exactly what they do.
But when you do this, what you want to do is you want to really you're going to be hosting your presentation in either a conference room area of a hotel or invite people to your house. But what you got to do is you got to explain the benefits of someone taking over your timeshare. And really essentially why they should buy it. So just listing it on the internet is not going to do the trick. And what I like to ask people is, I want you to think about it. When you first bought your timeshare, would you have bought it if it was just listed on the internet? Would that have gotten the job done? And in many cases, the answer is no. So the same rules are going to apply to you. You have to you have to actually present. Okay. So let me tell you guys a story. Um, I have a few clients of mine that that's literally what they do. They get the timeshare for an extremely low cost. And again, I have a service for that. And when they sell the timeshare, they actually host their own independent presentations. And they actually target people who have recently gone to timeshare presentations and who are actually interested in purchasing a timeshare, but that the timeshare was just too expensive. So if you want to sell your timeshare, and let's say if you target somebody who uh, recently went to a timeshare presentation and they were pitched from the resort that the timeshare cost $30,000. Let's say you get the timeshare for next to nothing. And then you sell it for $5,000. You're saving the person $25,000 and you're making a flip. So you can make money by selling your timeshare, but it does take effort. It's not this selling a timeshare isn't a list on the internet thing. When you when you list a timeshare on the internet, most of the people aren't going to know what it is. They're going to say, "Okay, so what is it? Is is this a, is this a condo? No, it's not. It's it's a week, a year, a week, a year. What does that mean?" And it kind of scares people away. So if you want to take over somebody's timeshare, I have a service for that. My cost is going to be way less than what any resort's going to charge you for a timeshare. And you can either try to sell it independently or you can rent it out, which is which is the second method in which you can make money with your timeshare. Here's another good resort too. This is the Plaza. Anybody who wants to come to Daytona, whether it be for Biker Week or uh, if you any of these that you're seeing here, just let me know. The plaza's a good ones, right? All, all of these are right off of the A180, right off the water. Go ahead and get a quote first from market. I want you to go to Expedia first. Travelocity or Priceline, go there first. And then come to me and let me see what I can do for you.
But again, this, so the first method is selling the timeshare. The second method is renting out your timeshare. So now when you rent, you can, you can rent in two ways. You can do, you can rent independently, which is called DIY renting, or do it yourself renting. And when you rent independently, what that consists of is you actually marketing your timeshare, or if you're if you're on a, like a listing site, then you would be the one listing. You would be the one uh, setting your terms and conditions, negotiating with the renter, and things of that nature. The second way to do it is to actually hire a service. Hire somebody who's actually going to send you the rental offers. That's what we do with timeshare renters. We, we do a bit of both. So remember I was showing you the plaza. So the, the plaza extends. Looks like they're actually adding a bit of an extension to it, but this is a great resort. But here is this is the plaza. This is great. I've done quite a few rentals for this location. <clears throat> this is nice. This is very nice, guys. They have one bedroom, condo style, two bedroom, three bedroom. When I say condo style, it's as if you're walking into a condo. Again, so going back to on the rental side, you have, you can either rent it out independently or you can hire somebody to send you rentals. If you rent it independently, then you're the one who's actually, again, setting your terms, doing your marketing. Because what if you're not on a site where you're like posting it? What if, you, what if you're just doing it independently? What if you, to the point where like, when you go to work and you're talking to your coworkers and letting them know, hey, I have this here, but you, you know, um, I could get you pretty much any resort all over the world. <laughs> you know, if, 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 if you have your timeshare paired with the proper exchange company, there's a lot that you can offer. Because when you're renting, you're not just renting out your, your deed of time. Your deed of time is gonna be one week every year or two weeks a year or whatever you signed up in your deed. That That's not the bread and butter when it comes to renting. When it comes to renting, it's flipping the getaway weeks. That is by far the bread and butter. And when I say by far, I mean by far the bread and butter in regards to making money from renting with your timeshare. Not much money you can make off of just one week. I mean, you'll, you'll make money, but it's not gonna be consistent. So you have DIY rentals and you have hiring a server. Here's the thing that's tricky about hiring a server is that there, there are a lot of scam companies out there. And that's something that I, I want to be upfront and honest about. There are. So when companies are calling your phone aggressively every single day, you talk to them and, and they get aggressive when you say you need to think about it. You look at their contract and they tell you that the rental of a timeshare is not guaranteed. Stay away from those companies. Do yourself a favor and save your money. Because you're talking to a scam.
tell you something else. When you talk to them, do they put a bulk of their focus on a BBB rating? If they do, I would stay away from them as well. And the reason being is because it's not that I have an issue with the BBB themselves, but what I don't like about the BBB is that you can pay for a clean rating. And that's the one thing that I actually really don't like about the BBB. And if you don't believe me, you can actually pause this video right now. If you're watching this video, pause it. Google the BBB's 800 number. And ask the BBB, say, I have a company the BBB, for those who don't know, is the Better Business Bureau. Say, so, hey, I have a company that I want to list, that I want to have listed in the BBB. Let me ask you this question. This is another good one, by the way. I'm going to pause with what I'm saying. The Daytona, Daytona Beach Residency, Re Regency, sorry. The Daytona Beach Regency. This is a good one. We've, we've done some rentals on this one as well actually did a, a, a family reunion they uh their host hotel was here and they had some overflow and they needed about 10 more 10 more units that was actually the summer of 21 actually wow that was two years ago <laughs> time flies they were very happy with that. Daytona Beach Regency. Yeah, they were really happy. See, here's the thing. Every, every time I get a renter, my goal is to make them a return renter. So I follow up with them. It's not a one, it's not a one-time deal. But anyway, Let's go back to the Better Business Bureau. Give them a call. Say, hey, if I have a business and I want it to be in the Better Business Bureau, what if my rating drops? What if I start getting some bad reviews? Am I able to pay for my bad reviews to be taken away and for my rating to increase? Let them answer that question. Matter of fact, it even says it when you, <laughs> this next, this is the Ocean Walk Club, Club Wyndham. This is a good one. So hold on one second with the BBB. Many of my clients have access to this one right here. So many of my clients are Wyndham owners. Guys, the Ocean Walk Club Wyndham is beautiful. These are luxury suites. Very, very, very beautiful, guys. Okay. This one is a crowd pleaser at all times. Very beautiful. Of course, I'm just showing you guys the outsides, but just think what I'm showing you, especially when I'm telling you that my clients have, have ownership. I mean, we're talking condo style units. You're walking in to a condo. Okay. And many of these resorts have rooftop bars. I mean, rest, you know, five-star restaurants in them. 
masseuses on deck. I mean, you really can <laughs> kind of just stay in the resort, seriously. And then it's on the beach. Masseuses that'll give you massage on, on the beach. <clears throat> Very good, we're gonna go further down. I'm gonna show you a few more that, that my clients have access to. Cause we're coming up, we're gonna come up on a Hilton pretty soon. Very nice, very nice guys. So let's go back to the BBB. Call them up and ask them. But again, when you, whenever you're checking a rating on the, on the BBB, you can see it, it'll say, <laughs> whether the rating is accredited or non-accredited. This accredited thing is, is their own stats. See, when it comes to the Better Business Bureau, the company, and I'm not trying to down talk the company, but the company is a private company and most of it is just psychological because the word bureau makes you think that it's a bureau, bureau of, the, of the United States government. I can name myself the Better Timeshare Bureau or the Timeshare Renter Bureau. There's no trademark on the word Bureau. I'm walking up on Burger King. They could call themselves the Burger Bureau, okay? The Better Business Bureau is a private company that lists their rating stats of companies. Now, people do leave reviews and things of that nature, and they do give, give a rating. It's the Ocean Walk Shops. So during the day, this is pretty full. It's like three stories high. looks out on the beach, very nice. And then here's the parking for it. You just kind of cross over this walkway here. Very beautiful. Again, uh, so let's talk, we're, let's talk about the BBB. So, they give a rating and the way that they make money really is by companies getting certain things to, to make them look better. So let's say if you have an A rating in the BBB, but let's say if that A rating is not accredited according to their status, again, this accredited thing, this is, <laughs> this is all psychological stuff. So in order to get accredited, you got to pay for that. In order to, 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 bring your, 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 your C rating up to an A or an A plus, you gotta pay for that. In order to remove negative reviews, you gotta pay for that. And when I last checked, you can do it for, for $10,000 when I last checked. I don't know if they, if they changed their price. If you wanna know the, the updated price, call the BBB. <laughs> I've had people who've contacted me and said, oh my God, I saw your, your video where you were talking about the BBB and wow, you were right. I called them up and they did say that. Don't just call them up act, acting like you, you, you just have questions alone. Say, tell them that, all right, here's the, here's the, the Hilton I was talking about. I'm coming up on it. Tell them that you are, that, 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 that you have a business and that you're interested in listing it in the BBB having it show up in the BBB. All right. From this angle, I'm not even doing the height of how tall this resort is any justice. Hyde Park Hilton, Daytona Beach, Florida. Luxury. Luxury, you guys wanna see?
and let me and let me clarify the the Hyde Park is actually the prime steakhouse restaurant that's inside of the Hilton this Hilton is actually the Hilton Daytona Beach oceanfront most of my clients not 60% of my clients are either Hilton owners or Wyndham owners. Then, then I also have, uh, many have Westgates as well. Let's take a look at this, this little fountain here. beautiful but remember like I was telling you earlier many of these resorts have five-star restaurants inside of them people come here for the restaurant sometimes they don't even stay at the actual resort the Hyde Park Prime Steakhouse is delicious I have clients, if you're interested in coming to Daytona, whether you want to come for bike week of next year, 24, or Biketoberfest, I still have like, I still have last minute availability. My clients have last minute availability for many of these resorts for Biketoberfest. Any of you guys that are, that are, that are into the bike culture, you know that when it comes to Daytona, it's a hub for, for bike culture. And when it's bike week or bike Toberfest, the city is loaded with motorcycles. If you wanna wait to make your booking until October, be my guest. <laughs> this is Daytona Lagoon, that's a great water park right there. Of course, that's the parking lot to it, but you got water slides, lazy river. The kids love it. But yeah, if you want to wait until October to actually make the booking for Biketoberfest, be my guest. I'm going to cross over so that you can actually see the oceanfront Hilton. to give it some justice. It's the ocean center over here. All right, you ready guys? Let's take a look at this Hilton. Let's look at this property. Let's look at this. Huh? And then the Wyndham's over there that we already walked by. Massive. Massive. I have I have last minute availability. I have availability actually for the Hilton for Biketoberfest. Send me a text, 407-964-5184. That's 407-964-5184. Say, hey, Chris, I want to go to Daytona. I saw that you mentioned that you have availability for the Hilton Oceanfront. What's the best that you can do for me? I'm looking on Priceline and I can see it for this price here. What's the, what's the absolute best that you can do? And I'll tell you what the absolute best that I can do. We beat the market. Now, let's say you watch this video after a certain date and I no longer have availability. 
and I'll tell you the best I'll tell you the best that I can do in regards to you know if it's a different resort if it's a Wyndham if it's a Westgate this is the Ocean Center at Daytona Beach let me just show you guys this real quick <clears throat> they have different shows here different exposés and things of that nature very beautiful just take a little walk For those of you that don't know, there's one of our other YouTube channels is at, at Daytona Fit, or just put Daytona Fit. The F-I-T is an acronym, Film in Transit. So you'll see clips from this video here. Uh, I just add music to it, nice relaxing music. Look at this, look at this, look at this Hilton guys. This right here, and the reason I'm spending so much energy on this. This is the fan's favorite. Right on the water. five-star restaurant in the resort. Beautiful. Kevin, yeah, here's another entrance here. So when we, when we walked through the other one that showed the water fountain that was that was this entrance over here to the left got another entrance it's massive property massive beautiful 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 units and what you can do just google it Check Priceline, Expedia. Look, look, look at the units yourself. Fan favorite, guys. You guys want to come to Daytona Beach, Florida? And you want to stay at a beautiful resort and you want to save money, what you want to do is you want to contact me. You want to contact me directly at 407 nine six four five one eight four or go to timesharerenters.com and you're going to click the box over to the right that says i'm not a timeshare owner but i want to save money i want to get the best rates for luxury resorts click that box you're going to fill out a form you're going to put your desired uh, check-in date check-out date the location that you'd like to go. And then you're also going to, most importantly, you're going to put your desired budget. I'm going to see this. I'm going to see that you filled out this form. And I'm going to go over to my clients. So, hey, I got a rental offer for you. This is the desired budget. If my client has the availability. We'll get this thing rocking and rolling. Now my client might say, uh, you know what? See if they'll do it for this much. Again, we, we always beat the market. But even in that case, then I come back to you and say, hey, my client says this, what do you think?
you're ready to rock and roll, I send you the the link for payment. You uh, agree to the terms and conditions. I'm going to send you a questionnaire. It's just a couple questions. Really, it's four questions that I need you to I need to get from you because my client is going to need to fill out a form to put the reservation into your name so that when you go to check into to the resort you'll be good the resort's going to know they're going to be expecting you otherwise it'll be in my client's name so now when you go to the resort keep in mind that if there were to be any chargeable damage or anything of that nature this is under your responsibility and this is going to be in the terms and conditions that you sign with me but in addition when you go to the resort you're going to be placing the security deposit on your credit card so just like you would if you if you were to book at any one of these resorts through the market be it expedia be it priceline travelocity When you actually go to check in, you're going to have to make a security deposit. The same thing. The security deposit is usually anywhere from 200. The security deposit is usually no more than $250. And it's a hold that they place on your credit card. Some resorts is a hundred dollars. The lowest, Security deposit that I seen was for $75. Sometimes they just need to have a credit card on file. So they're not really looking to take money. They're just looking to put a hold on the credit card. wish this thing was lit up it's one of those uh, slingshot things that shoot people up in the air yeah not me guys I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a fella that likes to stay on the ground I'm a ground guy you guys have fun way in the air like that God bless you I'm a, I'm a ground guy <clears throat> Ground guy. Take a little walk here. This is Main Street. So again, whatever whatever the resort is or wherever the location that you're looking to go, I'm this video of course is in Daytona Beach, Florida. But if you're looking to go to Las Vegas, if you're looking to go to Orlando, Florida, if you're looking to go to South Florida, if you're looking to go to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, I'm just gonna I'm gonna name some locations within the continental United States that we that we get plenty of rentals, uh, plenty of rental offers for. But we also do, I mean, we do the Caribbean, we do Mexico, Europe. When you're paired with the proper exchange company, the resorts are all over the world. But 
in regards to the continental United States, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Biloxi, Mississippi, Anaheim, California, Austin, Texas, Houston, Texas. I mean, any big city is gonna have a Hilton. They're gonna have a Wyndham. They're gonna have a Marriott. My clients have ownership at all these resorts. So even if they're deeded, I'm gonna talk kind of on the on the rental side, uh, on 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 the owner side for a second, because sometimes your owners don't don't know the full potential of their benefits yet. So you have two pockets of time. If you're if you're a timeshare owner, I want to talk to you real quick. Because you might say, well, how, how do you, what do you mean you have ownership at all these different resorts? You do if you have your timeshare paired with the proper exchange company. And, I, and I'll go through those. You, you, you heard me mention RCI earlier. There's also Interval International. The two main exchange companies are RCI and Interval International. If you don't have your timeshare paired with these exchange companies, then yes, the only time that you can rent or the only time that you have access to that you can use, whether you rent it, if you don't have it paired with RCI or Interval, then the only time that you'd have access to would be your deeded time, whether it's a week every year or a week every other year. or two weeks a year. Here's another side view of the Ocean Center. Let me just catch it from over here. If you don't have your timeshare paired with the proper exchange company, then the only time that you're gonna have access to is gonna be your deeded time. What pops you open like a flower is pairing it with the exchange company. So pairing it with RCI or Interval International, and then you have other companies that are that are starting to kind of come up. Blue Green starting to do some exchanges. When I say starting, I mean you know within the they're they're they're, they're starting to earn their marks. And many others. But RCI has resorts all over the world. So even if your deeded resort is not a Hilton, if you have RCI, you have access to Hilton properties because Hilton is an RCI property. It's within the RCI network. Wyndham is within the RCI network. Westgate is in the Interval International network. Marriott is in the Interval International Network. Disney properties in Orlando or California are in the Interval International Network. They were in RCI. They didn't renew with RCI and they're now with Interval International. Disney properties are great. So for folks that are looking to visit Orlando if you have your eyes set on a Disney property I could get you an amazing rate And once again, we beat whatever you see on the market by at minimum 20%. So if you say, hey, I wanna to go to Orlando from, I'm just gonna use it, September 25th 
through September 29th. I want to do a four night. And what I'm seeing on the market when I go on Expedia or, or when I go to the property directly, I'm seeing it for $1,600. Contact me and let me see what I can do for you. I might get it for you for a thousand. <clears throat> Same exact property that you're seeing on the internet. Same property that you see on the internet. So if you're interested in anything that I'm talking about, if you are a timeshare owner and you're interested in starting to rent your timeshare, if you're not a timeshare owner and you're interested in vacationing to a particular property, if you're not a timeshare owner but you're a small business owner and your business does a lot of travel, and you're not satisfied with the with the resort rates that you're getting or you know you don't want to stay in regular hotels anymore you want to you want to actually start staying in some resorts and satisfy your your employees if you're not a timeshare owner and you want to get a timeshare and not pay what the resort is charging If you're interested in any of these things that I'm saying, I want you to contact me directly. 407-964-5184. Send me a text. I'm usually in meetings, but I will respond to you promptly. Send me a text. Hilton, Daytona Beach, Oceanfront. Beautiful. Another thing you can do, if you have a question, you can also just put it in the comment section. I'll respond to you. I may even make a video out of it. But again, for you guys out there who are not timeshare owners, this is a hack that you can always do. You can always go to the market first and check and see how much it'll cost for wherever it is that you want to go. And then you could come back to me and say, hey, Chris, can you beat this? I want to go to this location from this state to this state. Can you beat this? Or what's, what's the best that you can do? Because if we have the availability, we're going to beat it. If I don't have the availability, 
at the particular resort you want, I can tell you what resorts I do have the availability. I'll, I'll, I'll always give you the next best option. Therefore, if that works for you and that still saves you money and still makes you happy, then we still got a win-win situation going on. Every single time that I have a rental offer for one of my clients, my goal is to make the renter a return renter. Every single time. So I'm following up with you personally, making sure that the check-in went okay. Got another question. Anybody who's interested in a family reunion? If your family is hosting a family reunion and you need some extra rooms Contact me. Again, I want you to contact me directly. Now, I like when people text me, but I also like when people email me. Here's the thing about email. Beautiful. This is another fan favorite, guys. Fan favorite. It's the Club Wyndham Ocean, Ocean Walk Resort. top up there look at that it's beautiful you're gonna contact me you can text or email me but here's the thing about emailing you need to mark that my email address is saved. One of the flaws of the timeshare industry is this. I'm gonna be honest with you. The timeshare industry does have a little damper on it. Since there are so many scam companies out there, whenever an email provider sees the word timeshare, They may just send the email to, to your junk. So what you need to do is you need to mark that my email address is saved. Say, hey, this guy, this, this, is, this is a good guy. He's not one of the scams. for you guys it's a good guy he's not one of the scams he's not calling me every day harassing me
giving me attitude. So what you need to do, if you, if you send me an email, you need to mark that I'm saved. So my email address is Chris, C-H-R-I-S, at timesharerenters.com. That's Chris at timesharerenters.com. Save my email address so that my response doesn't go to your junk mail. And then yes, email me. My goal is to help you in any way possible. One thing about me is I'm gonna be completely honest with you with whatever we have going on. So if you are looking to rent your timeshare, I'm gonna tell you pretty much anything that I know that's gonna keep you safe. If you need help on the DIY side, we have a service for that. If you become a member with us, we help on the on the do-it-yourself side. I'm not gonna talk against you renting it independently because what I want you to do is actually hustle your timeshare as best as you possibly can. In any way that you possibly can, I want you to hustle your timeshare. I'll be honest with you as well. Do we have an upfront cost? Absolutely. And if that's an issue, then we're not the company for you. And I'll be the one to tell you that. I'm not gonna try to swindle you to, you know, pay something that, you know, for whatever reason, you know, you can't afford or if it's an issue because if my enrollment is an issue, and if I have that rental offer for you, you're not gonna be able to buy the getaway week to service the rental offer. So if you are going to sign up and become a member with us, the ideal client has two things. Number one, they need to be able to cover the membership enrollment. be it the standard tier, the plus tier, or the premium tier. You need to be able to cover the membership enrollment. And number two, you need to have some, some funds set aside to be able to actually invest in the getaway weeks. I don't want you exhausting your funds on the signup. First of all, the, the, the main reason is I don't want to take any food off of your table. If you're talking to anybody that's calling your phone every day and you tell them, hey, look, this is all that I could afford. This is the last dollar that I have to my name. And I tell people, do this test. This is a good way to see if you're talking to a scam. If you're talking to them and they say, hey, for you to sign up, it's going to cost you $5,000. What I want you to do is say, my bottom dollar, the last dollar that I have to my name is $3,000. If that person that you're speaking to puts you on hold, comes back and moves that price down to 3,000 or anywhere near, or, or even if they move the price down to 1,500, if I were you, I would run away. If I'm speaking to you, and if the sign up is any bit of an issue, I'm the one that's gonna tell you this is, this is not the right time. You need to be able to invest. 
So you need to be able to sign up for the services. The membership enrollment cuts the lights on. That allows me to send you the rental offers for you and I to have consultations. I'll help you on the DIY side as well. And then you want to be able to invest into getaway weeks. If that's an issue, then it's not the right time. If you're talking to anybody that's telling you anything different, they do not have your best interest in mind. They just don't. Many, what, what, what many of my Wyndham clients do, because a lot of times the Wyndham clients end up with a Wyndham rewards card. It's like a line of credit, it's a credit card, so to speak. It's like, it's a credit card. <laughs> what many of my Wyndham clients do, they just put it on their Wyndham card. When we get a, f a few rental offers going, you get your money back. So somebody may ask, wait, well, how do you get rental offers? It's a good question. For one, we have regulars. We get rental offers from people that go to our website. Rental offers from people that see our YouTube videos. But then we also have contracted vendors that are contracted by us to send us rental offers. So even if you see a video and the video might, you know, it'll have a certain amount of views. We have contracted vendors that we hire that their whole job is to bring us rental offers. That actually makes up for roughly around 55% of our rental offers. Then we have small businesses that do a lot of small business travel. Remember when I was saying earlier, I do make cold calls. I don't make cold calls to timeshare owners and try to force them to become a member, but I do make cold calls to small businesses. And it's, it's on the rental side, small businesses that typically travel. Like a lot of, a lot of the businesses that, that we do, uh, that, that we do business uh, travel rental offers for are like construction companies. And those are good offers too, because a lot of times when they're on jobs, they're on jobs for like 30 days at a time, 60 days, 90 days. Right now, Hurricane Adalia recently hit. So you have folks going to certain areas that, that need to, they need a, a bit of uh, rebuilding. And they're paid by the insurance company. So. <laughs> so I, I have a month long offer for you and it's gonna be pretty satisfying. And you say, well, wait a second. How do we do a month long offer if when I go into interval, I see three day, five day or seven day denominations? How, how do you do a, a month long? Very good question. You do four, seven days. Sometimes interval is gonna make you get four different guest certificates. Or sometimes what we do, we just call Interval up and say, hey, listen, it's the same guest. And they may waive the, the, the three other guest certificate fees. But whether they do or they don't waive it, it doesn't matter because the rental offer is gonna cover all of that. You, you, if I got a month long offer for you, it's gonna be good.
And then for the renter, it's going to beat whatever they see on the market. timeshare owner especially if you have your timeshare paired with rci interval international i want to bring you some rental offers you're going to be helping me out we're going to be helping each other out and the way that the company is structured is that we make money together So here's the thing, the membership enrollment, that pretty much turns the lights on in regards to our service. But whenever we actually work a rental offer for you, there's what's called a rental service charge percentage that's taken out on the back end. I have, when it comes to my rental service, I have three membership tiers. I have a standard tier, I have a plus tier, and I have a premium tier. Standard tier is for people who just basically want to rent out their deeded week or their deeded weeks if they have like two weeks a year. Um, they're not looking to really make that much money. They're just looking to offset the, the cost of their maintenance fees because the standard tier doesn't, it's, it's the least amount of offers. So it's the cheapest enrollment and the rental service percentage that comes out on the back end is the highest, it's, it's, it's 20%. So if you to make the math easy, if you have a rental offer for $1,000, 20 percent of 1,000 is 200, I'm sending you a check or uh, sending it over to you wireless, whichever, whichever route that you prefer, but I'm sending you over $800. 200 will be the the rental service charge you make money i make money if you're in the plus tier as of now these quotes that i'm giving you are as of 2023 if you're in the plus tier the rental service percentage is 10 percent. so same rental offer let's say it's a thousand dollars just to make the math easy 10 percent of a thousand is a hundred you get $900. If you're in the premium tier, the rental service charge percentage is only at 5%. So the same $1,000 example, 5% of 1,000 is $50. Your payout is 950. So whichever tier, as you make money, I make money. And that's the way it needs to be. Whenever you see me, you're gonna see me in the paint. I'm always trying to get you rental offers whether I'm working my regulars, whether my rental vendors are sending the offer, whether you see me on, on YouTube, whether the rental offer comes from a particular ad or a certain blog, Either way around it, my job is to get you rental offers. As you make money, I make money. My job is to make money. In order for me to make money, you need to make money. If you're talking to anybody that sounds any bit different, I'd be worried.
If you're a timeshare owner and you're not interested in renting, and if, you, if you're interested in just exiting out of your timeshare, we have a service for that as well. So I know I spoke about that in brief detail earlier, but let's, let's delve into it. <clears throat> What's the cost of exiting out of a timeshare? Well, on average, is if you were to go to an exit company, they're gonna charge you anywhere from seven to $30,000 for you to exit out of your timeshare. You have some exit companies that actually come to your house to do a presentation, beware because those salesmen or saleswomen are really, really, really trained. And if they come to your house, they're gonna try shooting for $30,000 for you to get out of your timeshare. But the average, if you hire somebody over the phone, is gonna be anywhere from seven to $30,000 for you to get out of your timeshare. Seven to $30,000. Now, if you negotiate with them, they will negotiate with you, but they typically can't go any lower than $3,000. And I'll explain why. Here's the reason why they can't go any lower than 3,000. It's because they outsource their service to attorneys and the attorneys give these exit companies a bulk rate typically the attorney if you were to go directly to the attorney the attorney is going to cost anywhere from eight to ten thousand some attorneys seven thousand but eight to ten thousand dollars if you were to go directly to them so what the attorneys do with these exit companies is they say hey if you bring me a certain amount of people per month i'll give you a bulk rate and that bulk rate is usually somewhere in the lower two thousand uh, anywhere from $1,500 to like $2,500. So when I say that these exit companies can't go any lower than $3,000, I mean they cannot go any lower than $3,000. And if you don't believe me, pause this video right now. Google timeshare exit companies, press enter, and call as many as you possibly can. If you hear anybody on the radio, call that company. They're gonna do the same thing that, 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 that the companies that claim that they can sell you. They're, they're gonna give you an evaluation. They're gonna ask you, um, you know, do you have a one bedroom, a two bedroom? Is it a lockoff unit? Uh, or let's say if it's points, how many points do you get per year or every other year? They're gonna give you an evaluation. And then after they give you the evaluation, they're going to quote you and these exit it's going to be seven anywhere from seven to thirty thousand dollars but if you say nope i can't i can't afford that i can only afford two thousand they're going to say hey the lowest that we can go is three thousand trust me but pause pause this video it goes a hard rock again pause this video and call them so i have a service where if you want to give away your timeshare and think about it, if you're already interested in an exit company, you're not looking to sell it anyway. But if you want to give away your timeshare, my cost for that service is lower than $3,000. The second thing is that the process is a lot quicker. If you go with an exit company who's usually outsourcing to an attorney, it could take a couple of years for you for you to get out of your timeshare. They'll tell you, which I don't agree. I don't know why they, they tell you this. They'll, they'll say, once you sign up with them, they'll say, all right, you can stop paying your timeshare now. Don't. Because what will happen, especially if it's a bigger resort, if you're dealing with a Hilton or a Wyndham, these are actually pretty good resorts. And like I said, The exit company that's outsourcing to an attorney, this attorney is an attorney that costs $2,000, $1,500. If you're, if you're dealing with Wyndham, you're dealing with what Wyndham can afford. <laughs> dealing with what Hilton can afford. These are billion dollar companies. 
So you're dealing with their attorney. Okay? And in many cases, you go to trial, they're going to say, I want the money that that they currently owe. And I don't know, the next five years of maintenance fees, maybe 10 years. So I don't know why exit companies tell you that because many of them will tell you, they'll, they'll say, okay, you can stop paying. What I'm gonna tell you is don't stop paying. Stop paying when you, when, when you no longer own the timeshare. But until that date, keep paying. So, an exit company is very costly. It's a costly route to get out of your timeshare. They'll get you out of your timeshare. They will get you out of your timeshare, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. So if you want to just give away your timeshare, I have a service for that. Now, let's, let's say if you say, well, you know what, Chris, I don't want to pay you either. Perfect. Then what you need to do is you need to find the person. If you already have somebody that you want to give your timeshare away to, perfect. Because yes, that's the cheapest route to go. If you have somebody that'll take over your timeshare, don't pay me or an exit company. If you have somebody who wants to take over your timeshare, here's the next step that you need to do. So if you already have the person that, that you know wants to take over your timeshare, what you need to do is you need to contact your member services. Contact your resort, your, 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 your member services. Say, hey, I want to transfer this timeshare. I have this person, his name is Ronald Jones, and he wants to take over my timeshare. There will be what's called a resort transfer fee. But look, I'm going to give you a method that you can do this for free. You can negotiate that resort transfer fee with Ronald Jones. You can't negotiate it with the resort. The, with the resort, that's non-negotiable. But you tell Ronald, hey, you want my timeshare? I want you to pay the resort transfer fee. The resort transfer fee is usually anywhere from two to $500. That's a non-negotiable thing. So, but you can, you can, that's not negotiable with the resort, but you can negotiate that with the new potential owner. So again, if you have somebody that you want to give you, that you already have that's interested in taking over your timeshare, that's the best route to go. An exit company is going to be the most expensive route to go. They'll get you out, but it's gonna, it's expensive and it's gonna take a long time. Another benefit of transferring, of giving your timeshare away, which you, you give it away in the form of a transfer. What you're gonna do when you contact your, your member services, you're gonna end up transferring it. That's why there's a resort transfer fee. So when you give it away in the form of a transfer, It usually only takes 90 days, up to 90 days. And it's, and it's actually a lot faster if the owner is already with the particular resort. So like, let's say if you have a Wyndham and Wyndham, Wyndham's are on the point system. If I have somebody who wants to take over your timeshare, who's already a Wyndham owner, That may not even take 90 days to process because they're already a Wyndham owner. They're already getting points. It's just a matter of, you know, activating a couple things and getting the points placed over into their already existing account. 
I use Wyndham and Hilton as examples a lot because those are fan favorites. If you are a Wyndham timeshare owner and you want to get out, you want to give your timeshare away, or if you're a Hilton, Hilton Grand Vacation Club, and you want to give your timeshare away, I have people lined up hot and ready. As a matter of fact, if I don't have an offer from somebody to take over your timeshare within a certain uh, period of time, you get a full refund on my service cost. The stipulation is that the timeshare does need to be paid off. Now, here's the thing. You can still join that service if the timeshare is not paid off. But if the timeshare is not paid off, what we'll do in the meantime is we'll send you rental offers. And then when you're ready to actually take an offer from a new owner, at that point of time, you do need to make sure to cover the balance. But until you're ready, we'll serve you with rental offers. And many people do that, that accept that service. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope I brought you a wealth of content, valuable content. If you have any questions, you could pop a question in the comment section. You can send a text over to me at 407-964-5184. You can email me at chris, C-H-R-I-S, at timesharerenters.com. Again, remember to save my email address. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave me the thumbs up. And I hope everybody stays well. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.